do you feel about the plant-based burger craze? <clears throat> well, it's first of all, it's great to be here. Uh, we love the plant-based uh, burger craze. Uh, we were actually one of the first to endorse Impossible Burger. So, um, you know, we need alternative proteins as our population rises. We will um, at some point not have enough commodity beef for our population. So other forms of protein that will, that will keep the prices in check are something that we welcome. So you don't see it as a fad? You, say, you, you think this movement is here to stay? Well, um, I particularly think that, that these products, Impossible Burger and Beyond Meat, are most likely fads when it comes to burgers. I think that they're not fads when it comes to alternative meat substitutes, whereas it, you could use them in other dishes. And I've had them in other dishes by some of the best chefs in New York City, and I couldn't taste the difference. But putting them between two buns and making them a burger, which we are all familiar with what that tastes like, it didn't have that allure to, to me. Um. Well, meat is still the main part and will be for a long time, I would assume, of your business, right, Pat? It is, but um, we definitely see a future in, in this meat substitute. It's one of the reasons that we were the first to distribute it in the Northeast um, for Impossible Burger. Now, Impossible Burger was more on um, the industrial side of food service, whereas Beyond Meat was more on the retail side. So you. You had two uh, companies in the same space, but making a similar product, but in two different categories, one retail and one food service. In the last six weeks, we haven't had any supply of Impossible Burger because they've had a recall. So you'll see right now prices for Beyond Meat are probably a little bit higher than they should be. If you're basing uh -huh. them off, uh, if you're basing the price off sales, because anyone that was using Impossible had to go to Beyond. When Impossible comes back online, which they will, um, you'll see sales for Beyond decline a bit, and the price will settle right in. What about your customer base, uh, whether it be the high-end restaurants in New York that we know well or places like ballparks are you starting to see them demand some sort of uh, you know channel where you have to sell them these uh, these meat substitutes um, it's not that we have to um, it, it's something that we we actually advertised and and promoted initially but I think when the restaurant groups that we sell to the higher end spectrum when they begin to see Wendy's and uh, which is a, an amazing company, but obviously in a different category of food, they're not so willing then to have that same meat or meat substitute, in this case, sorry, uh, in their restaurant. So I'm starting to see a little bit of a decline in the high end as it expands to more of the general public in um, more of the fast food setting, which I think the fast food setting is amazing, and it's amazing that it's caught on so much there. But yeah. it, it does Speaking, definitely take away from um, high-end chefs wanting that product for their high-end restaurants. Speaking of uh, addressable markets, Pat, I'd love to get your take. We've had uh, Bernstein tried to take a crack at the total addressable market. They said if you looked at what plant-based beverages have done and applied that to this category, you'd be looking at $40 billion addressable in a decade. Give beyond 5% market share implies $2 billion in sales by 2028. Does that, does that sound like it's in the universe of the possible to you? Uh, it certainly does. It, and it does in the, in the, in the way that I, I had explained earlier. Maybe not in burgers, but as a meat substitute, sure, yes. I, um, and the beef industry, by the way, is not concerned with this. They are obviously watching it because of what happened to the dairy industry. But in speaking to some of the biggest beef packers in the country, like National Beef, it's not really a concern of theirs. They're, they're, they're keeping an eye on it, but they know that there'll always be that demand for real meat. And we don't really know what all the health benefits are, if there are any yet, for the plant-based products. I mean, there are other uh, environmental 
um, claims that are being made. But when you have a meat industry that's highly regulated by the USDA compared to a plant-based product that's not, you, th that's where the Cattlemen's Association uh, tried to, to stop those plant-based companies from using words like meat and burger, not to confuse the general mm -hmm. public. 